Hi dentists, how are you? This is Mohamed Musa from AFK Study Plan. And here we will continue today the articles from the NDEB website. As usual, get your notebook, get your pen, be ready to take your notes, try your best to answer the question coming into your screen. And without more wasting time, let's go deep now. Okay, so today we're gonna speak about the dental radiographic examination, recommendation for that uh, patient selection, limitation, and here we have two articles and the third one is like speaking in the same topic. So I will like make it in one video as we could go. So first of all, we're going to speak about the examination and what we're going to do for examination and rationale and then speak about x-ray. In this article, they provided two tables which are amazing. They combine everything in these two tables. And then at the end, they speak about X-ray and X-ray radiation and how to limit it and how important for you to limit the radiation and when to use X-ray. Okay, first of all, he is speaking about the guidelines and saying the guidelines is not to be used like as holy stuff. You should apply your clinical judgment on those guidelines. Radiographs are important. Dentists must weigh the benefits of taking the dental radiograph against the risk of exposing a patient to X-ray the effects of which accumulate from multiple sources over time, okay? And then we should know, like, it's no solution will fit everyone. So you cannot say, okay, kids will take x-ray every six months or adults will take x-ray every 12 months. No, it has a rationale why they taking these numbers. And I will show you the evidence for this rationale. And then we're going to dig deep in the evidence for this. And finally, we're going to take the numbers which you need to memorize and these numbers are extremely important because you're going to see them in exam and you feel like these numbers is make no sense and then when you see the rationale why they're choosing these numbers why you're choosing the frequency you can get the answer very easily okay first of all it's a patient selection criteria so radiograph if you can like estimate a criteria to divide your patient so you have two main category first is this patient is a new patient or a core patient Second, according to his age, so we're going to divide it in this matrix. Like we're going to say, okay, this is a new patient or a cold patient. And then we're going to say, okay, this is a kid. He has primary teeth only or mixed dentition or permanent dentition or dentureless or partially dentureless. And then we're going to say, okay, let's weigh the benefit versus risk for taking x-ray. Digital imaging may offer reduced rotation exposure and advantage image analysis, advanced image analysis that may enhance sensitivity and reduce error introduced by subjective analysis. And then he speak about a study um, done for the patients. And then I, I don't want to waste your time about this study. Like, as we said before, like we're going to divide it to four categories and two metrics. First is horizontal matrix. We're going to say the child with primary dentition, tran transitional dentition, like after eruption of first permanent molar. Adolescent with permanent dentition, like prior to eruption of third molar, like he has no primary teeth, an adult was dentate or partially dentitious. Okay. And then we're going to divide the patient on the vertical matrix to be the new patient or a recall patient. So the new patient, typically, such a patient receive a comprehensive evaluation or, in some cases, a limited evaluation for a specific problem. We're going to discuss this later. Recall patient, a limited evaluation of a specific problem or detailed and extensive evaluation for specific problems or a comprehensive evaluation. So for a recall, you have open you have open ended scenarios. So you can choose depending on the patient risk and situation and for sure the chief complaint for the patient. Okay, and then he speak about studies saying like uh, clinical caries or increased risk for caries or no clinical caries or no increased risk for caries or periodontal disease or history of a periodontal treatment. So this study is saying, okay, we, we're going to set the rule for this vertical and horizontal matrix, but we're going to add more as we go as a risk factor. Like he has caries or increased risk, or no caries or increased risk for caries or periodontal disease, or existing implant or other dental or craniofacial pathosis. So this is the general idea. Now we're going to speak a little more about x-ray and then we're going to jump to tables and in table, I please get your notes ready and may pay attention for every details. Okay. 
Interoral radiograph is useful for evaluation of dentoalveolar traumas. So now he's giving you more scenarios. So you're saying, okay, this means we take X-ray only if we have a new patient or recall patient. No, he's giving you more option. Take X-ray. Like after trauma, you may need it. Care should be taken to examine or radiograph for any evidence of caries. So this is important because like this is ethic questions. So if a patient comes to your office and he's complaining about pain because of like wisdom tooth and then you say okay let's take a band to see the if it's impacted erupted partially erupted and the 3 8 is partially erupted and you see it in the pan but in the same pan you see the 1 8 is partially impacted also patient didn't say anything about 1 8 his chief complaint today at this one you are mandate to tell the patient about his chief complaint for sure as a first thing to be discussed with the patient and tell him by the way you have other tooth which is impacted same same impaction maybe less maybe more maybe he's just paying attention to this one maybe he has episode before for this tooth or he has nothing but you should tell him so this is important like if you take x-ray you are mandated to read every inch of this x-ray and discuss it with the patient for sure you're going to discuss first chief complaint and then discuss the other uh, stuff you found in x-ray Radiographic screening for the purpose of detecting disease before clinical examination should not be performed. What does this mean? This means like, it's not like you, I, I know this is a common practice in clinics here, but this is not correct. So you come the new patient, like new patient come to your office. If he is partially dented or he's, he has only denture, so he's going to take x-ray for everything. You're going to take 4 by 3 You're going to take 4 by 8 No, it, it depends on the situation. If you have a child come to your office and he has um, history and he has good parents, we're going to speak about parents because this is a risk factor for the child um, care is risk assessment. And he has open contact. That's the teeth are spaced. There is space. You can see the interproxima and you can examine it with a probe. So you're going to take x-ray for ev everything? No. This is not correct. This is a, not a good practice to be done. So this is a meaning of this information. Radiographic screening for the purpose of detecting disease before clinical examination should not be permitted. You should look into your patient mouse and then you can, okay, let's do this x-ray, let's do this x-ray, okay? Each schedule provides a range of recommended interval that are derived from the result of research into the rates at which interproximal caries progresses through tooth enamel. So the table I'm going to show you now in this article, giving you numbers. This numbers is not like, okay, let's make it six months, three months. No, they didn't do it this way. So they have studies tracking the progression of caries through interdental area, interproximal area, and saying, okay, the rate in the primary dentition is this, rate in primary dentition is this. So we're gonna divide, as we divide it by age, so we're gonna say this and this, okay? So let's go to the table now. Okay. First of all, as we say, the horizontal matrix and vertical matrix. Vertical matrix is going to divide the patient to a new patient, a recall patient, and the recall patient, we can divide him with increased risk for caries or with no risk or increased risk for caries. As we say, there's four categories for the child with primary dentition. Let's read it. I know it's a little boring to read, but like I, I want you to listen. Individualized radiograph exam consisting of selected preapical occlusal view and or posterior bite wing if proximal surface cannot be visualized or probed. Patients without evidence of disease and with open proximal contact may not require a radiograph exam at this time. So this is critical for you to, to understand the idea here. It's not for every patient. Okay. And then he speak about child with tran transitional dentition like after eruption of Permanent teeth, individualized radiograph exam. Also, you should take a look inside the patient mouth. And then this is where we go for four x-ray. If adolescent's patient come to you prior to eruption of third molars and his first time to for you to see him in the office, a full mouse enter or a radiograph exam is preferred when the patient has clinical evidence of generalized oral disease or a history of extensive dental treatment. So if this patient, you are eligible to do a new patient exam every two years or three years, depending on the insurance, I mean about insurance wise. So from this perspective, if a patient comes to your office and you know this patient, he did uh, filling for you in your office before, or he 
in the history taking part he said like he did filling before or you see a bridge in his mouth you see this stuff okay so let's do full x-ray you do full x-ray for this patient for recall patient so recall patient mean this is not your first time for for you to see this patient so at the end of the first visit you're gonna say okay this patient has clinical risk carries risk of low moderate high and then you go for the matrix we're gonna speak about in this article and the other one and then you're gonna book him frequent okay so the patient with increased risk posterior bio twinning exam at 6 to 12 month interval if proximal surface cannot be examined visually or with a probe again if it's open contact you don't do this and this is applied for child child with trans um, transient dentition or before the eruption of the AIDS and if adult is dentate or partially edentulous Posterior by twing exam at 6 to 18 in month interval. So again, it's 6 to 18, and here is 6 to 12. We're gonna explain why this number coming, where from this number is coming from. And then if he has no clinical risk, posterior by twing exam at 12 to 24 month interval, if proximal cannot be examined visually, posterior by twing exam at 18 to 36 months, and this is the number driving patient, driving doctor crazy in the exam because you see the number, what this said, 36. I, I believe now you can understand this number. Posterior by twin exam at 24 to 36 months interval. So again, it depends on the risk and the benefit. You should find yourself a matrix to remember these numbers. It's important to remember the numbers. I remember before, before we speak about the other risk, so, so periodontal disease, monotric dent, dent facial growth and development, or with other circumstances like implant stuff like this. So to cut it short for you, clinical judgment is to be used in these situations. It's not just a take x-ray, take x-ray, take x-ray, okay? And then he goes here to specify everything. Previous periodontal endodontic treatment, history of pain of trauma, familiar history of dental anomalies, and you can read it at your convenience. They the other stuff. And here, a uh, part, I, I think you should read it, like here, because like I remember, um, this was asked before, who was speaking about patient with bulimia, patient has uh, bulimia, so what carries risk um, you are going to put this patient in, and what's the frequency, just be, pay attention for this detail, okay? And then now we're going to, whatever we speak before, we're going to recap it here, so I know, let's hear it again, um, because like saying twice make it more deep in your mind. Okay, so open contact in primary dentition will allow a dentist to visualize and inspect the proximal anterior, uh, posterior surface. Closure of proximal contact requires radiographic assessment. So, and here is the number, the evidence for the number. Evidence suggests that many of these lesions will remain in the enamel for at least 12 months or longer depending on fluoride exposure, allowing sufficient time for implementation and evaluation of preventive intervention. So what this means, this means like the follow-up, the carious progression with x-ray and clinical exam, they found at least 12 months. Hence come the numbers, so for this one. And in permanent dentition, it's a different number. Pre-epical radiograph is to be done, pre-epical biotwing is to be done to evaluate. So patient without evidence of disease or and with open proximal contact may not require radiograph examination at this time. And then child, after eruption of six, here giving you studies, I don't want to waste your time. So he's saying per epical or panoramic radiograph is to be done. Panoramic is to be done to if the patient has a trauma, so you should take it to check everything, it's not only the teeth. A closer radiograph may be used in combination with pan or without the pan, if the pan is not very clear. Like if you are looking for impacted canine and the band, usually this area in, in the band is not very clear. So you may take a closer radiograph to check it or localization of tooth position, as we said before. Okay. Individualized, individualized radiograph examination consisting of posterior by twin with pan and or posterior by twin and selective periapical images is recommended. So let me um, explain more this selective periapical images. So if you have patient coming to you and you do um, a band and you see root canal treatment and this root canal treatment has a crown. So you take pie twing to check the crown margin, the open contact stuff like this and you check the crown margin, it's fitting or not fitting and you should see this part. And then you need to take a BA specifically for this tooth. So you can say, okay, the root canal is good, it's short, it's not condensed well, 
you give your comment about this root canal treatment and see the periapical region if he has some reducency stuff like this. So this is the meaning of selective periapical image. You are not doing to do periapical image for every posterior teeth. Okay. Permanent dentition, panoramic radiograph, a cruiser or periapical radiograph can be done to take supranumerary teeth or unerupted teeth. Full mouse intraoral radiograph examination is preferred when the patient has clinical evidence of generalized oral disease or history of extensive dental treatment. Again, the dentate and partially dentate. The instance of, oh, this is um, new information. I want you to listen carefully. The instance of root surface caries increase with age. Please, I want someone to answer this question. Why this happened? I will not say it. Please, someone write it in the comments. Like, you can write it here. I, I will see it later. Why this happened? Although bite wing radiograph can assist in detecting root surface caries in proximal surface, the usual method of detecting root surface caries is by clinical examination. So if I ask you which one to be used or which uh, usual method to be used to detect uh, root caries in old age patients is clinical examination is not the radiograph. Radiograph is good, but clinical examination is more accurate in giving you the extent of the caries in the root, okay? A full mouth intraoral radiographic examination is preferred when the patient has clinical evidence of generalized oral disease or a history of extensive dental treatment. I will ask you a question here. I will not give you the answer. Please look for the answer for yourself. So if I'm asking you a patient uh, coming to your office uh, for a new patient exam and he giving you a history that he had periodontitis before and he underwent treatment and he was on a hygiene program for every three months and then he didn't go to his dentist due to COVID situation, blah, blah, blah. What is the X-ray is needed for this patient? What X-ray you gonna do for this patient? Okay, tell me your answer. Okay, and then adult, um, edentulous. For edentulous, the most common pathology condition detected are impacted teeth and retained root with and without associated disease. So if the patient comes to your office and he has denture, upper and lower denture, complete denture, you say, okay, we don't need to take x-ray. No, at least you need to take pan because you, it, you might find a retained root or impacted teeth at the back, pony specule along the arbor ridge, residual cyst or infection, developmental anomalies of the jaw, intraosseous tumor, and systemic condition affecting bone metabolism. So you should take this x-ray at least for him. And then he speak about studies. I will not waste your time here. A full mouth series of periapical radiograph or a combination of pan, occlusal, and other extra oral radiograph may be used to achieve diagnostic and therapeutic goals. And here he speak about the partial dentate, not the uh, full mouth. Recall patient with clinical caries or increased risk of caries. You remember we speak about the risk. Now we speak about the age and stuff like this. We're going to speak about the risk itself and we're going to speak in a recall patient because risk you cannot define it in the new patient uh, exam, okay? For a child, as we said, four categories. First category, if you have proximal caries region and he has more caries, uh, more risk, like poor oral hygiene, high frequency of exposure to sucrose containing food and deficient fluoride intake, so he is a higher risk for sure. For this patient, posterior bite wing is recommended at six to 12 month interval. And if you remember before we said about the evidence for this child, we said like the progression of caries in the primary teeth at least 12 months, it's one year. That's why we're saying six to 12 months. So you're gonna ask why six, it's 12, why six? Because we adding this risk. If you add this risk, you get number two, the half, because this means maybe he has more caries progression, okay? And then speak about dentate, a partially edentulous patient, if a new or recurrent lesion that are detectable only by radiograph examination, so you should do it. So posterior bite wing examination is recommended at 6 to 12 to 18 month interval because this is a permanent patient. We has, he has permanent teeth. So it's more than like, I, I will give you the evidence now about the caries uh, rate progression, caries rate progression in permanent teeth. They say it's three years and up depending on the caries risk assessment and everything. So the numbers here are going to be three years. That's why we have six to 18 months. And then depending on the chief complaint for the patient for sure. And edentious patient, no radiograph examination is recommended without evidence of disease, okay? And then you speak about the risk. So now we speak about recall with no clinical caries or no increased risk. For a child, we're gonna say he has no problem with this and we're gonna speak we, we we said this before in primary teeth the caries process can take approximately one year to progress 
through the outer half of enamel and about another yeast through the inner half. That's why we're gonna make the interval. Radiographic examination consisting of posterior pipe wing is recommended an interval of 12 to 24. And again, you're gonna ask me why we're gonna double the number because he has no risk. So I, I want you to get the idea here, not just memorizing the number. So the evidence said in primary, it take one year and up. In permanent, three years and up. So you add the risk factor over this, with his age and new patient already cool, then you get the answer. Numbers, if you think about it this way, it's ridiculously easy. You just can not memorize number. You can just like um, think about number and you almost like almost always every time you're gonna get the correct number. Okay, and then patient with permanent teeth. Development of proximal caries lesion, which may only be detected by radiograph examination. The caries process on average take more than three years to progress through the enamel. That's why here you see radiographic examination consisting of posterior bite wing is recommended at interval of 18 to 36 months because he has permanent teeth and we said he has low risk for caries. So we're going to make number up, not make number down. And then again for dentate or partially edentious patient, radiograph examination same to be 24 to 36 unless the patient has some chief complaint. If he has chief complaint, he's speaking about different specific tooths. That tooth, like he has that clasp over it. It's a mobile. It's painful. So you should take PA for this one, regardless of the guideline here. Okay, and then um, with a periodontal, you remember we say the risk is like the caries stuff like this, and we're gonna say the different risk factor is a periodontal disease or implant stuff like this. So patient have clinical evidence or a history of periodontal disease treatment should be determined on the basis of the anticipation that the important diagnostic and prognostic, prognostic information will result. So remember the question I asked you before patient he had before periodontal treatment. I think now we can get the answer for this one. Okay, so the recommendation, it is recommended that clinical judgment to be used and determining the need for the type of the image that to be used for this patient. And again, patient with uh, transitional dentition, it's recommended to use your clinical judgment about this one. Adolescent with permanent dentition, it's again recommended use clinical judgment and the same for dentate or partially edential patients. You should use your clinical judgment. Anyway, for all patient category, um, a few examples of other clinical circumstances are the use of the imaging of dent uh, imaging for dental implant treatment planning, placement or evaluation, and the monitoring of dental caries and remineralization, the assessment of restorative and endontic needs, and the diagnosis of soft and hard tissue pathosis. So you are not taking on X-ray only on this category basis or in this guideline basis. So if you have chief complaint, if you have implant you want to follow up, if you have RST you want to check, you can use your X-ray. Okay, so to, to cap everything for you, this is the guideline you should follow. This is the risk factor you should apply. So you have two matrix. First is age, second is new patient or recall, and then you add the risk factor, and then you add previous treatment done for the patient, and then you have the rationale for primary one year, for permanent up to three years, and you add risk, it would be half the number, low risk or no risk, you double the number, and that's it, okay? And then he's speaking about limiting radiation for exposure. So he will speak now about the um, X-ray machine itself and how we're going to make it as low as we could. And this is a principle called ALARA principle. ALARA is as low as reasonably achievable. So you don't want to misdiagnose miss the diagnosis for caries and you don't want to expose your patient for more x-ray so first part is done now so you're gonna con like consider the risk age and stuff like this second part the x-ray machine itself how we gonna use techniques to make it less so by the importance the sequence of importance uses use of the fastest image receptor compatible with the diagnostic task if speed film or digital. So we speak about this. We said like digital X-rays, it's using less X-rays, so less radiation exposure for the patient. Second important factor to reduce the X-ray radiation, collimination of the beam to the size of the receptor whenever feasible. 
Third part, uh, proper film exposure and processing technique. For sure, like if you didn't process it in a good way, the image will be ha has poor quality, so you need to retake the image again. Use of protective aberrants and thyroid colors when appropriate, and limiting the number of image, image obtained to the minimum necessary to obtain essential diagnostic information. Okay, and then he is going to explain more about every option. Switching from D to E speed can reduce a 30 to 40 percent reduction in radiation exposure. The use of F speed film can reduce exposure 20 to 50 percent compared to use of E speed film without compromising diagnostic quality. I think there is a question about these numbers and um, these questions. So I think you have the answer now and you have the reference for the answer. It's not like I'm, I'm not here to tell you the answer. I'm here to give you the reference for the answer and you can remember the answer. If I give you numbers only, you will remember nothing after half an hour. Okay, and then he speak about the different type of digital imaging sensors. There are um, two ways to, to have a digital sensor. It's direct or indirect. Direct mean like you have the sensor and says a patient mouse expose, you see the x-ray immediately on the screen. And indirect, like you have to take the film from the patient mouse and go to your um, processing room and then you're gonna use it's almost the same like this like um the old film but like it's digital in a way so i think it's useless no one is using it now and then they have three ccd charge couple device and the other one is cmos and the third one is psp all this you should to know which one to be used where and the difference between indirect and direct the indirect one use psp the direct one is the other two okay and then he speak about culmination. We said the culmination. Culmination is like when you think about it, this you are sending radiation to the patient and you want to see this part only. So it makes perfect sense to limit the radiation to be here. If you have culmination, is resembling the shape of x-ray, which is rectangular. So the rectangular culmination is perfect for this purpose is much, much way better in reducing the radiation to the patient more than a circular one. Think about the circular cone and a rectangular cone and you, the patient will have the sensor inside his mouse, which is rectangle. So rectangle kilometer, decre uh, kilom kilometer decreases the radiation dose by up to five folds as compared with circular one. I hope now we understand the concept about it, okay? And then there is something called BID, position indicating device, should be open ended and have a metallic lining to restrict the primary beam and reduce the tissue volume exposure to radiation. Use of long source to skin distance for 40 centimeter rather than short distance of 20 centimeter decrease exposure by 10 to 25 percent. If I were you, I will not remember these numbers. It's like uses to remember the numbers. They never ask about the numbers, but you should know. Rectangular is much way better than circular one. And the distance is important. When you increase distance up to 40, increase of 20 instead of 20, it's good. And again, the BID is extremely important. And think about it. The BID is restricting the X-ray and make sure you hitting the X-ray is exactly at the beam, uh, at the sensor inside the patient mouse. Okay. And then now he speak about the voltage. Lower voltage produce higher contrast image and higher interest skin dose and lower deep tissue dose and level of scattered back scattered radiation. So the voltage, if when it's lower, for sure within the limit, so it give you better image. It give you higher contrast image. And I want you to think about it. I don't want you to memorize it. Think about it. If you have X-ray with a lot of gray sheets. If it, the X-ray has a lot of gray sheets, so this X-ray will have low contrast. The X-ray with low contrast is not diagnostic. Think about it this way. So if you have X-ray and you want to judge the RCT here, and you see the apex of the root, and you see the bone, and there is high contrast between them, the shade of gray of the bone is totally different from the shade of gray of the tooth itself. If you have higher contrast, you can get diagnosed easy. Think about it on the other way. If you have a lot of gray shades, so you have low contrast image, which is not diagnostic, so you will need to do it again, which is against LARA 
concept here. Okay, and he's saying the numbers as setting above 90 kilo voltage will increase the patient dose and should it be used. The optimal operating potential for a dental x-ray unit is between 60 to 70 kilo voltage. So 60 to 70 is the number you should aim for. Okay, and then speak about the thyroid gland. And again, we speak about it in, in the other articles. We said the thyroid gland is more susceptible to radiation exposure during dental radiographic exam, given its atomic position, particularly in the children. So we have two factors here. We have two factors. Thyroid is near the head, so for sure it will be exposed more to X-ray than the other body parts and the age. So, so, if all the recommendations for limiting radiation exposure are put into a practice, the gonadial radiation dose will not be significantly affected by the use of abdominal shielding. Therefore, use of abdominal shielding may not be necessary. I know this will drive dentists crazy, and I know this is against what we have been taught in our countries, but like again, I will read it out loud for you. If all recommendations of limiting radiation exposure are put into practice, like you use the correct combination, use BID, you make the distance to be like 40, instead of 20 and you have digital x-ray if you have manual it will be f speed so the dose will not be significantly affected by the use of abdominal shielding therefore use of abdominal shielding may not be necessary let me tell you a funny story here once i was working with a dentist he graduated from sydney in australia and he was like fresh fresh like he was like i was like his first assistant working with him and he saw me using the abdominal shield. I was like, well, what are you doing? This is useless. I was like, man, what's wrong with you? We have been using this for ages now. He said, no, 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 you can read about it. It's not anymore. The thyroid one is the most important one. Honestly, I was like, man, you are tricking me. He said, no, it's correct. And honestly, this is correct as by evidence here. And this is a number of articles. You can dig deep in the article down and read the article. It's a huge article speaking about it. And this is a guideline they are using here. So to cut it short for you, limitation for radiation, if you do, if you use everything, so thyroid um, cooler is the um, one you should, should be used here. Protective apron and thyroid shields should be hang on a lid flat and never folded because like it, it can be broken from inside. And if it has cracks, so it will leak X-ray. So all protective shield should be evaluated for damage, tear folds and crack monthly using visual and manual inspection to be um, accommodated for this one. Okay, and then we speak about the last thing, the dentist himself and the assistant. So we are the last object to speak about here. The maximum permissible annual dosing of ionizing radiation for healthcare worker is 50 MSV. This number is important. Please try to memorize it. And the maximum permissible lifetime dose is 10 MSV. Multiply by the person's age in years. So you get like if he's 40, multiply by 10, he's 50, multiply by 10. So the maximum barrier is 50, meaning like if you reach 50, you shouldn't be in an environment for x-ray for any way till the end of the year. Okay. A personal dosimeter should be used by workers who may receive an annual dose greater than 1 MSV to monitor their exposure level. Pregnant dental personal operating x-ray equipment should use personal dosimeter regardless of anticipated exposure level. So it should be used for everyone, pregnant or pregnant anyway, like even the admin outside, you're using x-ray in the room, you're going to leave the dosimeter near this um, waiting areas to check the x-ray radiation. This one will be used as a control and every assistant and dentist will have his badge and this one to be sent back to our organization to track it every three months they send you the report and it's a huge operation you should take care of this one or someone in your office you should take care of this one okay and then he speak about firm exposure and processing it's extremely important to make sure you have um your expo uh, your processing uh, process to be very perfect because it's not perfect you will have non-diagnosed x-ray so you will do x-ray again which is not good okay and then speak about again about dark room stuff like this and i think that's all for this uh article there is nothing more to be speak about here yeah nothing more here and then he gave you this machine x-ray 
frequency and thermal processing. This is, I think this is a good um, table. You can read it at your convenience. It's giving you the same we said before, but like in details and to, to be in a matrix so you can read it after you read first this one and then you read this one. It gives you the information and it will be easy for you. Numbers here are not very important. Numbers, the other numbers for the frequency is more important than this one. Okay, and the conclusion here. Radiograph should be taken only when there is an expectation that the diagnostic yield will affect the patient care. So you don't take x-ray for any patient, you take x-ray only when you see the patient because a sister cannot tell you that teeth are spaced for young children. You should see him by yourself, okay? Dentists should develop and implement a radiation protection program in their offices. And these are the two main important criteria here to be done and to be considered from this article. You have two main factors to think about it. Patient and your um, staff and yourself for sure. Patient, we speak about it before, and the staff, you should use this one and you should use thyroid color is the most important part. Okay, I hope this was beneficial for you. Please pay attention to the question on your screen. Um, if you, yeah, the questions is answered. When you check the answer, you will see this answer is correct or not correct. Okay, if you didn't get the idea, you just go back five, seven minutes. Like I will give you the question every 10 minutes. May depend between eight to 12 minutes. The average will be 10 minutes. So if you see a question and you see this answer, I cannot understand this answer. You go back five minutes, three minutes, eight minutes, this 10 minutes, you will have the answer included in this 10 minutes. So you just watch it again, you will get the answer. And for sure, feel free to share the video with the dentist going to the exam. And if you have any question, if the answer is not very satisfying for you, leave me a comment, I will get you back. Okay, thank you. Have a good day.